All right, day 11. Let's take a uh, sneaky, sneaky peek at the leaderboard before the problem opens up. If I can click the buttons, Talklime still in first place with 1,226 points. An anonymous user, 2266002 in second with Joshua Lees in third. So congrats to you three. We got another, uh, I don't know, like 20 people joining. This is, <laughs> this is the account that I use to set up the private leaderboard. <laughs> We've got about 60 people on right now, which is wonderful. Love seeing you all here. I think I'm somewhere around, I don't even crack the top 10. <laughs> but thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. And it looks like the problem just opened up. So let's get in and take a look. Monkey in the middle. As you finally start making your way upriver. Right, so we dropped from a bridge. Uh, the elves kind of just bailed on us. And now we are walking along some river. Monkeys are playing keep away with our things. To get our stuff back, we need to be able to predict where the monkeys will throw things. After some careful observation, you realize the monkeys operate based on how worried you are about each item. Okay, we take some notes, puzzle input on the items each monkey currently has and how worried we are and how the monkey makes decisions based on your worry level. So monkey zero has 79 and 98. The operation new equals old times 19. Don't know what that means yet. The test is divisible by 23. If true, throw to monkey two. If false, throw to monkey three. Okay. Starting items lists our worry level. So these are the worry levels for each item. Looks like we're setting these in a VEC because they are ordered. Operation shows how your worry level changes as that monkey inspects an item. So an operation like new equals old times five means that your worry level after the monkey inspected item is five times whatever your worry level was before inspection. Test shows how the monkey uses your worry level to decide where to throw an item next. If true, shows what happens with an item if the test was true, and false, false. After each monkey inspects an item, but before it tests your worry level, <laughs> another ordering issue, <laughs> the relief that the monkey's inspection didn't damage the item causes your worry level to be divided by three and rounded down to the nearest integer. Okay. The monkeys take turns inspecting and throwing items. On a single monkey's turn, it inspects and throws all of the items it is holding one at a time in the order listed. Monkey zero goes first, then monkey one, and so on, until each monkey has had one turn. The process of each monkey taking a single turn is called a round. Are there enough rules for you yet? <laughs> when a monkey throws an item to another monkey, the item goes on the end of the recipient monkey's list. Okay, so we're pushing on. A monkey that starts a round with no items could end up inspecting and throwing many items by the time its turn comes around. If a monkey is holding no items at the start of its turn, its turn ends. Okay, so it's not do the calculation for all the monkeys and then apply it. It's do the calculations for monkey one and then monkey two and then monkey three. Here's all of the rules being applied. Wow. After round one, the monkeys are holding items with these worry levels. Monkeys two and three aren't holding any items. They both inspected items during the round and threw them all before the round ended. This process continues for a few more rounds. Chasing all of the monkeys at once is impossible. You're going to have to focus on the two most active monkeys. If you want any hope of getting your stuff back, count the total number of times each monkey inspects items over 20 rounds. So, okay. <laughs> In this example, the two most active monkeys inspected items 101 and 105 times. The level of monkey business in this situation can be found by multiplying these together. Figure out which monkeys to chase by counting how many items they inspect over 20 rounds. What is the level of monkey business after 20 rounds of stuff? Okay, how are we going to set up a test? So this is our input, right? So let's grab all of our input. We're here in day 11. Let's drop our input in here. That somewhat hilariously messed up the syntax. So I think I'm going to change tactics here. I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be test.txt. And I'm going to drop that directly in. And then for this string slice, I'm going to include string, which is a macro. And I think it's from the root, if I remember correctly. So it'll tell me if it's not. It doesn't look like it is. Okay, so it's from within the source folder, which is where lib is. So it's from the lib file. Include str is a macro that allows us to read in a file at compile time and stick it in the input here. This is an approach that uh, many people have been using for multiple days now, but we've never really needed to use because it's never been an issue. But because this input is so sensitive, I am going to do that. Okay, so we are going to need to parse. We've got the name of the monkey, 
their IDs. So we could store all the monkeys in a VEC and then iterate through the VEC. The only issue with that is what? Nope, these can be indexes when we parse. Divisible has to come into an operation. Looks like divisible is the only thing that we do actually. So there is no other test. Oh, and there's a spammer in Discord. Wonderful. Hang on while I uh, quickly ban this person. Okay. Perils of being a Discord mod sometimes. <laughs> got to react to the spammers when they, uh, when they arise. Okay. So we've got monkey zero, monkey ID. These can be indexes we can store in a VEC. We've got the starting items for each monkey, which makes me feel like a VEC of VEX could be the right option. The operation is going to be per monkey which makes me feel like maybe we could have a monkey struct of some kind that holds its own state, so it holds a VEC. Then we'll also set up an operation and a test for each monkey. That could be nice. The test would then tell us which monkey to throw to. That could be cool. So let's, let's try that. Let's start with the parsing. Imagine that, Chris starting with the parsing. Who would have guessed? What I'm gonna do here is actually bring in the text for a monkey. So the monkey parser is going to be a string slice coming in with an I result that returns the string slice, the rest of the input, and a monkey. So a monkey looks like items with a vec of U32s, I think. I think those are all positive. Let's take a look at the operations quickly. So our test input operations old times 19, old times old, old plus three. So it's either addition or multiplication. And what is old? Is old the it's command F for operation in here? Operation shows how our worry level changes as the monkey inspects an item. So the old worry level times five, the worry level being per item. So this function will be called inspect. So we'll have an operation, which we'll call operation maybe, and that'll be an enum. So what I've done here is I've created a monkey that has an operation, the operation is either multiplication or addition, and it has two values, the values to operate on. It's either gonna be the old value, so the old worry value of the item that is currently being processed, or it's gonna be a number. And then we also need this test, right? Test shows how the monkey uses your worry level to decide where to throw an item next. So maybe we make a test struct. So if I create this test struct like this, uh, it'll tell us that the key is true and false are keywords and that we can't actually do that. We could fix this like this. If we use our hash, then we get to use any keywords we want. And while that's okay, I'm going to do true recipient and false recipient instead. So we should be able to parse three lines, get this number out because I think it's always divisible by, right? So it's always divisible and that should work for the monkeys. So let's get this a little bit closer to the parsing function so that I can see it and read it. But input, this will be the ID equals, I never know how to spell preceded. So it's preceded by tag monkey space, but we could also do, there's gotta be a um, some kind of pair thing. I think delimited, right? That'll work. Limited by the tag, uh, a complete U32, and then another tag, we pass the input, and that should give us, well, we have to bring in all of these, and I'll just specify that fully as nom character complete U32. Stick a to do in here so that we don't get the squiggly lines for our I result. And then we need some throwaway equals white space one input, which should gobble up the new line and all of the white space at the next line. And this could be the operation, right? So it'll be input and we'll get, what was the, th what did we call this? Did we call it an operation? We did call it an operation. We'll get an operation out of this. Maybe I'll call it operation. Um, of course, we need to bring in white space, generate white space. Is it not called white space? Multi space. It's called multi space. And it's multi space one. Yeah. Multi space one from nom character complete multi space one. Um, and then operation is something we need to write. So we have this function operation that takes the input as a string slice and returns an I result operation. I'm just going to throw this in as its own tag. So operation new equals, which I think they all start with. And this is going to be a value. It's either going to be old or a number. So we can do alt here, we'll do tag old or a nom character complete U32. We need to bring in alt. And I think this makes the most sense as its own parser actually, because we're gonna reuse it again right below it. So maybe this is digit one instead. No, what we're gonna do here is map 
and this is going to be value old. Wow, I really messed up the syntax there. There we go. Map value old, and then dot map num value num num, and that'll fix our type issues. Of course, what we want here is the value parser. So I'm going to make a function called value that takes a string slice, returns a value and an i result, and is literally just this function. We'll check why that's a problem in a second, but for the moment, can we continue? It looks like we can't actually. So let's do cargo watch x check. And it's expecting something here. So let's to do this for a second. And this is line 42. Oh, because I'm not handling the error. That's why. Okay, so that's good. We're going to need another one of these. That's why I split it out. And then in between, we're going to need uh, not operation. What did we call this? I guess we did call it operation, didn't we? What's another word for the operator? There we go, operator. So this is either going to be the old, and then we'll do this character delimited by white space. So multispace one, alt, tag star, or tag plus. Write that out so it formats. Did I misspell delimited? Delimited. Multispace one. Each of these is going to get mapped. Actually, I don't think we need to map that yet. We can map that down here. Okay, so here we've got a star or a plus delimited by white space on either side. Then we've got another value, and that should be good for operation. The alt, of course, is not done yet because we need to pass in input for it to get the value back. And then in the operation, we return OK input. Well, we don't actually have to do that here. We can do, let's do let result here, and then we'll leave this OK input result. And this will be mol or operation mole. Yeah, operation mole, value one, value two. It's gonna be operation add, value one, value two. And then we need to do the parser for this bottom piece. So our test struct again is divisible, true recipient, false recipient. So there's only three things we need out of this. We'll grab another multi-space in here to get to the test. We'll set up a test parser here and that'll be monkey. So monkey is fairly clean here. And we'll do OK input monkey fill the struct fields using Rust Analyzer. We didn't do starting items either. So we have a to do for starting items. So monkey, whatever, multi space to do starting items. And it's going to end up being items op test is what this is going to turn out into. Is starting items easy enough to write in line? I think it is. This is a separated list by comma space. And this is a tag to start. So let input items equals preceded tag this followed by separated list, separated list one. And this is separated by the tag comma space. And it is a nom character complete U32. Pass in the input, use a semicolon, use Rust Analyzer to format it. I misspelled preceded, didn't I? Where is preceded? We used it somewhere else, didn't we? No, we used delimited. There's only one. There's definitely not an F. <laughs> uh, preceded. There we go. Nom sequence preceded. Okay, and then we need test to work. Test is going to be this extra stuff, so it's going to be a little bit harder to write. Not incredibly difficult, just a little bit more typing. And we're assuming that we're at the start of test, so we'll do let input divisible equals preceded tag test divisible by and then the classic nom character complete u32 another multi space here to clear out the new lines and stuff and then we get if true we'll do the same exact thing so i'm just going to copy and paste it actually so it's going to be this with this to start off and then we'll do it again but there will be no white space at the end so this will be our to do and this is going to be preceded by this. And this is going to be preceded by false. What do we call this in test? True something or other. True recipient. Why did I call this input? This is test, right? So this is going to be true recipient. And this is going to be false recipient. This will be OK. Input test. Get Rust Analyzer to fill in these values. Because we already named them the same thing, we get this nice little shorthand, which works for us. And then all of the monkeys are separated by, what, double new lines? Yes. 
So in process part one, we do let input monkeys equals separated list one. And I know what the input is, so I'm just gonna new line it twice and we'll unwrap it and hopefully that works. And we do a to do down here to hold it and a debug on monkeys, which I didn't put on any of our structs. So we do need to write derive debug in front, in front of all of the enums and structs that we want to print out. And then I will get rid of this and we'll run test. And it looks like I messed up something here. Looks like I messed up at operation. So we've got monkey starting items operation, right? I bet you it's white space. Operation, where's monkey? Monkey, multi-spaced starting items, and then no multi-space after that. So one thing we could do here is actually take this tuple and then set them all up in a tuple. So it would be tuple with this delimited parser, multi-space preceded, multi-space operation, multi-space test, which could look cleaner. Shrug, really personal choice at that point. But let's take a look at our monkeys and see if we've got the right stuff. So 79, 98, multiplication, old and num, test, divisible by 23, send to two of true, three of false, monkey, four items in the right order, add old and num, 19, two, zero, good. Three items in the right order, old and old, 13, one and three, we're good. 74, old and three, 17, zero, one, we're good. All of our monkey parsing is correct. So now we need to actually figure out WTF. The uh, question is actually asking us to do in what order. So we go through each monkey. Every time we hit the end of the monkeys, that's our round. So we need to do at least 20 rounds, right? And we need to keep track of which monkeys are the most active too. <laughs> so we could do a loop like this for round in 0 0.20. Monkeys needs to be mutable because we're going to modify it. We are gonna need to access both the monkey that we are dealing with first, as well as the monkeys that are later in the list. So I don't think we're gonna be getting away with anything like Windows mute or any, any sneaky, awesome new functions. So I think we're gonna go with monkey index in zero dot dot monkeys dot length. So for each of these, we're processing monkey zero or one or whatever. So then we do, what? What do we need to do? Monkey inspect, monkey test. I kind of want to write these as impl on monkey. So monkey zero inspects, worry levels are applied. Uh, the monkey gets bored. Current worry level is not divisible by 23. What? Wait, wait a second. I thought it said divide it by 23 and floor it. Wait a second here. Okay, so current worry level is not divisible by 23. Wait a second. Oh, this is the test. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> the worry level divided by three is the one we need to floor. So monkey inspects an item, monkey operates on item and returns a value. Value gets divided by three for that specific item. Monkey tests item or something tests item, I guess. I guess it's not technically the monkey testing it, but the monkey still throws it. So I think it's, <laughs> we're gonna call it the monkey testing it. Okay, so we need inspect and we need test. So I think, We've got monkey, right? And we'll do impl monkey. We'll create an associated function inspect and an associated function test. Inspect is gonna pop the item off from the beginning. So we actually need a vec deck here, right? Yeah, so I say we need a vec deck here. If you don't know what a vec deck is, uh, it is spelt like vec de q. So a vec deck or a vec de q or whatever you wanna call that or has functions called push back and pop front, which is exactly what we need. So if we push back, that doesn't help. Why is it not showing us? Let's just run this. I don't want to do that. I want to debug buff. Let's run that. Mismatch type, right? Because I'm not supposed to be returning that. Run it. So we've got a vec deck. We create a new one. We push back, push back, and we end up with one and three. So the back is kind of like the end of what you would consider a vec. And if we do, what is it, pop front, I think is the other function, we should get a one. So we can push back, pop front. But that does mean that these items need to be a vec deck instead, which I don't think changes any of our parsing, actually, does it? Items, I guess it does. So items here, but I know that this always succeeds. So vec deck from items, I believe is gonna be enough for us. 
129 expected pattern. Did I? Yeah, okay, I did. So inspect is gonna take a mutable self and it's going to return to us a U32 or one of the items. It's going to do this by let item equals self dot items dot pop front, right? And that's an option. I'm gonna unwrap here actually, because if this doesn't work, then we've coded something incorrectly. So we've got our item, which is a U32. The worry level is the operation applied. So match operation, uh, self dot operation, sorry. Self dot operation, fill match arms. So we'll get A and B for A and B. Num A is gonna be match A, which is either gonna be old, which will be item, or will be num, which is gonna be num. Let num be, and this is gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this. Equals match B for the same reason. And then we're gonna do A times B. And of course, this is also true for the addition. This is gonna be what, A plus B. And this is gonna be an issue because what, I have a reference on one of them. Can I add value to value? You shouldn't, oh, these aren't A and B. These are num A and num B. So num A, if I can type, I can't type, ah, uh, num A times num B. And this is also num A plus num B. So we've taken, or we haven't taken because I, it is yelling at me for some reason. Consider borrowing here, yes. Borrowing is great. We love borrowing. All of these are gonna have to be dereferences because num is going to be a reference to the value inside of the value. I shouldn't have named that value. It's gonna be a reference to the number inside of the value inside of our enum. So what we actually wanna do is work with the real number. So the monkey inspect function takes an item off of our items list from the front. So at the zero index, we match on the operation that the monkey is supposed to perform. It's either gonna be a multiplication or an add. And I've chosen to just copy and paste the code. So we got num A and num B for both of these add and multiplies. First, we match on A, which is gonna be a value. That's our value enum or a reference to a value. If it's old, then we wanna use the old item number. If it's num, then we wanna use the num. Because the num is a reference, we wanna dereference it to get the value. So that num A is actually a U32. And then we do our operation. And we're returning that from the match arm, which returns it from the match. So inspect will return this match or the result of that match. I think that that's all we need to do for inspect. The worry level also needs to be processed though. I think before we do anything with it. So worry level is gonna be this, and this is going to be what? Divisible test, we're gonna test it now. Does that sound right? That doesn't sound right. We're gonna divide by three. We always divide by three, right? Worry level over three. We made this a U32, so we don't need to floor it because it floors automatically because integer division cannot have leftover numbers. So if we have 1501 divided by three, we're gonna end up with 500.33333 repeating, of course. <laughs> I forget what that quote is from. Um, and then it'll just floor to 500 for us because we can't represent floats as an integer. Uh, then we need to do the test, right? So this returns that, and then test is just a self, right? I don't think we actually need a mutable reference here. Worry level is divisible and which one it should go to. So it's gonna be a self and an item, which is gonna be a U32. And our test is gonna be divisible and either have a true recipient or a false recipient. So wait, if it's divisible by? So this is mod, are we looking for mod here? So if item mod, or I forget, I always forget which direction this goes. Let's go check it out, Rust Playground style. So fn main, let um, value equals 23, I guess. Debug value mod 500. What are the other ones that, they all fail though, right? So I don't even know that it matters. Not divisible, not divisible, not divisible, not divisible, not divisible, <laughs> not divisible. <laughs> which one is divisible? 2080 and 13. So let's do debug, uh, what is it, 2080? I think it's 13 mod 2080. So 23500 shouldn't work because they need to equal zero. But 13 2080 should work. So should it be the other way? Yes, it should be the other way. It's big number, small number here for us anyway. So 523, but is it actually? 17, yeah, okay, cool. So it's big number, small number. 
Rust Playground. Rust Playground is so good for so many things. So it'll be if item mod self.test.divisible equals zero, then we return self.test.true recipient else self.test.false <laughs> recipient. So this has to return a U32. And we're probably going to be good there. Okay, so we've got our logic doled out into monkey.inspect and monkey.test. And then it's our responsibility to push on later. So for round for monkey, let monkey equal, or rather, yeah, monkey. I think here I'm going to get mute. Oh, monkey.get, monkeys. That's not even how you spell monkeys, is it? This always has to succeed, so we'll unwrap it. So we do the monkey equal monkeys dot get mute monkey index dot unwrap get mute gives us a mutable reference to a monkey as you can see the type here. It's basically the safe equivalent to doing an index access, but because we're unwrapping, it's also not safe anymore. <laughs> so the item we get back from inspect then needs to get tested. So monkey dot test item the monkey to send to is the monkey dot test unwrapped on a num value at thirty seven. That doesn't, oh, that's in part one works. That's in our test. Okay. <laughs> I was like, did I mess something up? Okay. So we've got our monkey. We've got the item for a given monkey. We've got the monkey that we need to send the item to. That's just a U32. So it should be copied out. So monkeys, monkey to send to dot items. We could be explicit. Push back item. So we'll do get mute again here, unwrap it. Why does that need to be? Oh, slice index needs to be a U size. And then it's good. So I'm just using a bit more of an explicit nature to access the monkeys in our VEC. I'm using a get mute, which will give us a mutable reference. That mutable reference will drop when we're done. So we get mute with the monkey that we need to send to with the item and we push it onto that monkey. And we keep doing this for 20 rounds. Uh, we don't actually care. <laughs> about all of the rounds. We do need to keep track of the scores somehow. I think that's all we need to do in general. <laughs> it's so much. When a monkey throws an item to another monkey, the item goes on the end of the monkey's recipient list. Yada yada. A monkey that starts a round with no items could end up inspecting and throwing many items by the time its turn comes around? Wait a second. A monkey that starts a round with no items could end up inspecting and throwing many items by the time its turn comes around. A monkey should not be able to throw items if it's not its turn, right? If a monkey is holding no items at the start of its turn, its turn ends. So for monkey index in whatever, I guess we can do a shared reference here. So we need to iterate over all the items a monkey has, right? So for existing item, because we've already used the item name in monkeys, monkey, index as u size oh no monkey index is already u size dot items i think that this won't work for us because of the mutable reference that we have here yada yada this wants to be a reference is that what it wants to be and that gives us an issue with these get mutes so what we're actually going to do is for underscore in this dot length zero dot dot this dot length and then everything will work because we're still working with indexes so should we even look at what's happening here. <laughs> when a monkey throws an item to another monkey, the item goes on to the end of the monkey's recipient list. I still don't understand why this sentence is, exists. A monkey that starts a round with no items could end up in an inspecting and throwing many items by the time its turn comes around. I could see it receiving a bunch of items before it gets to its turn, but I can't see it throwing them away before it gets to its turn. I have half a mind to print out everything like this <laughs> in order just to make it easier to compare. Why not? Why not do this? Why not be absolutely sure of what's happening? I think that I'm going to take that to heart and actually do it. Print line, monkey, monkey index with the colon. And then we get this line, monkey inspects an item. Monkey inspects an item and worry level. And these three are all from the inspect function. So if we go to our impl and I am intentionally keeping in the white space so that these show up exactly the same. Monkey, monkey inspects an item with a worry level of whatever. And I'm going to do let result equals this. And we'll have another one here. So the worry level is multiplied by whatever to result, right? Let's take a look at this. 
query level increases by six to whatever is the other wording for this. I'm gonna keep this on the same white space level. And you can already see on the left-hand side here, our, our stuff is starting to print out. So I'm actually excited about this because it'll make it real easy to compare. Monkey gets bored with item, a worry level is divided by three, two, result. Because I'm not returning result here. Okay, that's a bunch of them. We've got a bit more. Current worry level is not divisible by whatever. Item with worry level item is thrown to monkey, monkey to send to. And then the test function is the last one. Actually, that's not gonna work because it's too many, too many variable accesses. Print line, this, save this out. This is going to need to be a variable that gets passed in because you can't do variable access inside of one of those little shortcuts. Okay, so now I think what I'm gonna do, wow, this is a lot. Oh, we did 20 of them. We needed to not do 20 to start with. We're gonna do one round and we're gonna look at the output of one round, which I think is all we have. We'll copy this, stick it over here. We, and then we're gonna do this. That looks good. Let's do check the whole thing, I guess. Find, paste. How many rounds does this have? Item with worry level 1046 is thrown to monkey one. Where does that exist in this? That exists right here, right at the last line. So that's this whole thing right here should match, but it doesn't probably because I missed one of the lines to log out. Or I, uh, I think I did actually, what is it? Not divisible by 17, but did I do is divisible by? Yeah, I didn't do is divisible by. So we've got is not divisible by or is divisible by. But at this point, I'm pretty pretty sure that what we got here is correct because it matched pretty well. But I'm not even gonna read through all this. I'm just gonna make it match and then check it. So I'm gonna remove all this, dump it in this text file, triple click this, go into VS Code, hit Command F, hit Command V. We still don't have the right match. I think I just forgot to do something in the output. We can check each monkey individually. So let's start with this. Done, monkey one, success, monkey, or monkey zero, success. Monkey one, success, monkey two, not success. Monkey, monkey two looks not success. Okay, why is monkey two not success? One, two, three, one, two, three, four items for each log, four items for each log, not divisible by, not divisible by, where level is multiplied by itself, ah, by itself. Why is it by 60 here? Oh, by 60 because, yeah, okay. So I think this is all accurate. The only thing that I didn't do is um, if we have the old output up here, old needs to be two stringed. And I don't think that I care enough to do that. Like here, we don't actually want to print out old and num. We want to write a display implementation for old and num, which could be fun because this would just become B and this would just become B. Let's do it. Why not? Um, why can't we use B though? Value can't be default value cannot be formatted with the default formatter. That's exactly what we want. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do impl default for, or not default, sorry, impl display for value. We do need to bring it into scope. Once we bring it into scope, Rust Analyzer will write the implementation for us, or at least the scaffolding of the implementation for us. This is going to end up being a write that takes an F to start with, I believe. I always forget it takes a formatting string like we're used to plus the value. So this is either going to be, we're going to match self, fill the match arms with Rust Analyzer. Old is going to be itself and num is going to be num. I'm going to two string this or can I do as string? No. Okay. The match, the return value from the match arms needs to be the same is the issue here. So two string and then this will be two string as well. So we get a string return from both of the match arms. And this is our impl display for value. We have to implement a function called format that takes a reference to self and a formatter. We use the right macro or other ways, but we can use the right macro. We pass in the formatter as the first argument, the formatting string that we're gonna use as the second in the same way that we would in print line, and then the values that we'll use in that formatting string as the third argument. In this case, we match on self. If it's an old, we say itself. If it's a num, we pass the num back. I'm definitely not winning any speed awards today. <laughs> Writing extraneous display implementations. So we copy our new output. Actually, that could be our test, couldn't it? Actually, now that I think about it, that would be hilarious. So in this output, I'm going to paste in. I'm going to look for itself because we should see it at least once. We do see it. I'm going to 
copy all of the output and I'm gonna go into VS Code and hit Command F, Command V, which should to find everything. And you can see that we can't really read the find, but it matches every single line in our output. So everything that we've done is correct so far. Downside is now I have a ton of output here <laughs> all the time. I could have used tracing to fix that. Maybe I'll show that later. I'm just kind of going off on a tangent here now. <laughs> okay, so we've done everything. Everything looks like it works, at least for one round. And we need to, what? On a single, what are we actually detecting here? Chasing all the monkeys is impossible. You're gonna have to find, count the total number of times each monkey inspects items over 20 rounds. Okay, so every time we inspect, we're gonna add a field to monkey, touch count, it's gonna be a U32. Our monkey that we parse into, if I can find it, it's gonna start with a touch count of zero. And every time we run inspect, I don't need to store this information in the monkey. I could have stored it anywhere, um, but I chose to store it in the monkey because I thought that would be fun. So monkey inspect item. Every time we run this function, self.touch count plus equals one. That's it. That's what we need to do. We aren't using the round counter but we do need to run 20 rounds. And then we need to monkeys dot, dot iter sort by key. We're gonna take a monkey and we're gonna get monkey dot touch count, monkeys dot iter dot reverse dot take two dot sum <laughs> dot two string should be our uh, return value here. Sum is gonna need to be typed. So we're gonna use a U32 here and what am I doing wrong here? The trait sum reference to monkey is not implemented for U32 because I need to map over this. Dot map monkey, monkey dot touch count. Could have avoided doing this by doing it earlier, but I didn't. So, ta-da. Now we scroll through all the output. It's so much output. Why did I do this? Okay, so 13, 14, zero or 206. I don't think either of those are correct. In this example, over 20 rounds, Two most active monkeys inspected items 101 and 105 times. Multiplying these together. Okay, it's not sum, it's product. So let's copy this in. <laughs> we paste that here. We do a scroll all the way down to the bottom. I really need to put tracing in here so that we don't have to constantly get this output. Uh, and this is gonna be product. And our test passes here. Okay, so that works. Cargo run bin part one. And because I used yesterday's puzzle input, it failed. Let's copy this in. I really hope that there aren't any assumptions that I missed here. Oh, this is the test stuff. I don't want to overwrite the test stuff. That's three monkeys. So let's do the input. Say if we got seven monkeys this time, that's far fewer monkeys than I thought we were going to have, honestly. Cargo room bin part one. We get all of the output with the final result. We put that in here, we submit, and we get our gold star. Which is nice, because, you know, I don't know. I spent most of the time writing code and not actually running anything. <laughs> okay, you're worried you might not ever get your items back. I would be worried too if a bunch of monkeys stole everything I owned. <laughs> so worried, in fact, that your relief that a monkey's inspection didn't damage an item no longer causes your worry level to be divided by three. Unfortunately, that relief was all that was keeping your worry levels from reaching ridiculous levels. You'll need to find another way to keep your worry levels manageable. At this rate, you might be putting up with these monkeys there for a very long time, possibly a 10,000 rounds. With these new rules, you can still figure out the monkey business after 10,000 rounds using the same example above. Okay, so, so worried in fact that your relief that a monkey's inspection didn't damage an item no longer causes your worry level to be divided by three. So is that, if I, if I think about this correctly, we've got our inspect, right? And the worry level is multiplied, but there's no damage ever happening, right? So we just get rid of the divided by three. I have to read back to the part one to figure out if this is actually what's happening. Um, damage. Okay, so we just get rid of that logic. After 10,000 rounds, the two most active monkeys inspected 52,000 and 52,000 times, multiplying the level of monkey business is now this. Worry levels are no longer divided by three after each item is inspected. You'll need to find another way to keep your worry level. What do you mean you'll need to find another way to keep your worry levels manageable? We don't actually have to do that in the puzzle, right? Um, so in any case, I think monkey, we'll just add another field here because it's easy for now. Well, we can do this in inspect too. 
because inspect is get gets called. What is relief going to be? Worry level is this stuff. Where's the divide by three? Result equals worry level divided by three. We'll say relief lowers worry level, and this will be uh, a bool. So it'll be true or false. So we need to modify part one a little bit, but that's fine. If relief lowers worry level, then we do this. Well, let result equals this else worry level else the value from why why is worry level oh because this needs to be so uh, the problem here is that for an if expression if you don't write your types in the first branch will be what rust infers to be correct and the second branch is what will show up as the error so the first one here because i put a semicolon is unit so if i remove that then we get both of them are the correct thing so the test case is now this should be this number and the process part one inspect is true which means that we can copy and paste this now and set inspect to false that's such a weird thing to be i don't like that api but um it works for us for now it's always the risk of abstracting in the first problem for advent of code okay so this is going to be entirely too much output, by the way. So if the 10, 0, 0, 0, I'm going to use the classic underscore here to represent 10,000. We'll cargo test. Attempt to multiply with overflow. So we don't need U32s. We need, is this number too big for a U32? U32 max int is, I don't want this to actually. Okay, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, and 3 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four. That seems reasonable. What's the multiplication here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four. So U32 max should be fine for 10,000 rounds. So why are we overflowing? That's a question. We're overflowing at 70 at this multiplication. So maybe the values that we hold need to be U64s. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder if this times itself yeah, so if that is multiplied by itself, um, then we have a problem. So I don't think <laughs> I don't think we get we're gonna get in any trouble for doing uh, U64s for everything. So let's just run it like that. Attempt to multiply with overflow. That is way too much. Okay, so we actually need to figure out how to lower worry levels. Is that what's going on? Worry levels are no longer divided by three after each item is inspected. You'll need to find another way to keep your worry levels manageable. I have no idea what that means. Does it want us to overflow? Does it want us to use some mathematical trick? Dang, I really wish it would just tell us. Okay, so the numbers are too big. Um, we could be really, we could be really cheaty, um, potentially. I have never tried to use this before. <laughs> so I don't know what's about to happen, uh, but there is a U128 and the number is pretty big. That is the max number here. So I wonder if we cheat and we do 128, we still get way too big. Okay, so you we can't actually cheat at this and use just like an absolutely massive number. So the worry levels are going to be what? The worry level is the operations here. It's either a multiplication or an addition. I have no idea how to cheat at this mathematically so we've done everything correctly we have everything working and we get to the point of do this calculation and know the trick for not having to multiply very large numbers well luckily i am doing this to teach people rust and not to automatically know how to problem solve for arbitrary <laughs> things like this so if you would like to figure out the trick here because there is a trick and you just have to kind of know it. If you want to figure it out, stop watching now and come back after you figure it out. Because I'm just going to show you and I don't even know if I'm going to implement it on the video yet. So the issue is that you have to recognize that, first of all, we only need to care about whether it's divisible, which is fine. But also, you have to recognize that all the numbers in the divisors are all prime. So you have to inspect the input to know that. And then you have to know also that the Chinese remainder theorem exists and how to apply it. So I've made a commit for the day 11 minus the trick that you need to know. And I'll have another commit here once I implement the trick. Okay, so 
back after implementing the magic trick. We've changed all of our numbers to U64s because we do actually need the extra space. We previously used U32s, which worked for part one. U64s are what we need for part two. I've also modified the inspect function to take a magic trick U64. Now, the magic trick is that we need to, when we do our worry level application of math here, or a multiplication or an addition, in both cases, we need to mod the result by this magic number. I've commented out all of my logs here too. <laughs> so the magic trick, let's put an underscore here. The magic trick basically is that we need to take the monkeys, we need to iterate over all of the monkeys, we need to map that to the numbers that we're dividing by or the numbers that we're checking to see if we're divisible by. And we need to multiply all of those together. This is very WTF. So it's worth noting that all of the numbers that are divisible by are all prime numbers, all of them, every single one of them. And you wouldn't know that unless you looked in here and you read through all of the input individually to find out that all of these are prime. Because they're all prime, we can multiply all of them together and then use them to do the mod operation. And the mod operation, our magic trick, is what keeps the number low, but still applicable. So we take the magic trick and we pass it into inspect and then everything else runs as expected. This works in part one, this works in part two. So if we cargo run bin part two, um, I will realize that I uncommented one of the print lines and we do get a number here right at the end. So we can take that and shove it in here, hit submit, and we get one gold star. Now I do wanna be clear that I did look up that answer because I would never have gotten that answer. Uh, I am not a competitive programmer. This is not my field of expertise doing these puzzles. So I would rather teach you how to do Rust stuff rather than spending a bunch of my time figuring out the Chinese remainder theorem and its applications. I hope that some of you were able to get that. I'm sure some of you were, a bunch of other people were able to, but I did have to look and check today. So that's it for day 11. I hope you enjoyed it. I think I've already gone over everything. It's been so long trying to figure out this magic, magic trick that I don't remember if I did or not. <laughs> but of course, the code is on GitHub. I will add the magic trick now. Ta-da! So that'll be up there waiting for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments as always. I really actually enjoyed the parsing challenge here. I really did. I'm going to comment that out and amend it to the commit. I really enjoyed the parsing challenge here. I really enjoyed coming up with the struct. I really enjoyed writing the uh, other functions. And of course that gives us the VEC of monkeys, which we can iterate over for each round. I'm gonna name this round actually. For round in zero to 20, for monkey index in zero to monkeys length, we iterate over all of them. We get a mutable monkey. We use the inspect function on the monkey that we defined. We have a monkey to send to. We send it to that monkey using get mute again and we use a vec deck to push to the back, which was all really fun. Then we sort it, we take the two highest values. We've done this already, so I won't go over it. And I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great rest of your day.